Welcome everyone to selfprinciple.org. Thanks so much for joining us. As always, I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi. Today, we're gonna to talk about kidney disease and what is the role of fiber and can fiber help in lower your risk of kidney disease? So specifically, we're gonna focus on this concept of uremic toxins. Now, don't worry if you don't know what they are because we're gonna talk about it in detail. With that, let's go ahead and dive into the research. One of the things about fiber that you wanna know, what the heck is it? Well, it turns out, it's a type of carbohydrate, but a type of carbohydrate that your body actually can't digest it that easily. There's two types, there's soluble, and of course there's insoluble. Insoluble, think of it, it just passes through the body. And soluble, on the other hand, it can dissolve in water, it can go inside the body and forms like this gel-like material, lowers blood pressure, cholesterol, sugars. The recommended amounts of fiber intake for the average adult for men is 38 grams per day, for women, it's about 25 grams per day. But the average adult only gets about 10 to about 15 grams per day. So there's a huge opportunity for us to add fibers in our diet. Now, why should you care? Well, fiber is linked to a whole host of health benefits. It can lower your weight. It can lower your fasting insulin levels. It can lower your fasting sugars. It can lower your heart disease risk by about 29%. It can lower the risk of stroke by 26% diabetes by about 19% and obesity by 30%. So overall, fiber is a wonderful thing to add to our diet and not just the fact that it's good for you, but when you look at specifically how it works, there are all these mechanisms and how it can lower cholesterol, it can lower blood pressure, and it can lower inflammation that's going on inside the body. Now let's switch into kidney disease. Well, it turns out kidney disease is actually quite common. 9.1% of the world's population is affected by it. And when we look at the data in 2017, over a million people died from chronic kidney disease. And if that wasn't startling enough, when you look at the statistics, right now we have about two and a half million people who are undergoing dialysis treatment, which is basically a way to clean the blood of toxins. But by 2030, is projected that number to double to 5.4 million people. So this is really an important thing. And one of the things that happens in kidney disease is you get this formation of uremic toxins. Now these toxins are linked to a whole host of problems. They can affect your blood vessels and cause vascular damage. They're linked to things like memory decline, like dementia and other cognitive disorders. And Overall, they lead to all sorts of inflammation going on inside the body. Let's talk about two important uremic toxins, indoxyl sulfate and p cresyl sulfate. Now, these are protein bound, which means they're attached to proteins and they're made by your gut bacteria. But what's interesting is, is that patients on dialysis, they have concentrations that are 54 times higher for indoxyl sulfate and that are 17 times higher for p cresyl sulfate. And unfortunately, when you undergo dialysis, it only removes about 30% of these uremic toxins. So you still have a lot of them accumulating. So the question is, is, is there a better way to help lower the production of these toxins or to help with the removal? And that's where fiber comes in. Let's talk about fiber and kidney disease. Now, oftentimes we restrict plant-based foods in patients with kidney disease because of the risk of potassium. But I think that's overblown a little bit. We can do a simple blood test to see where your potassium is and how we can help you out. Phosphorus, on the other hand, that comes from plants, is actually absorbed about half the amount as it is in animal foods. So in animal phase phosphorus, it's about 40 to 60% absorption versus only about 10 to 30% absorption in plant-based foods. So there are lots of lists of high potassium foods and you can take a look at them, you can Google them, there's several websites. But just because there's some foods that are high in potassium, there's plenty others that you can switch over to that are lower in potassium and that can help you make healthier choices. All right, so let's get into a really nice meta-analysis that looks at what is the role of fiber when it comes to these uremic toxins that build up in kidney disease and do all sorts of damage. So this was a combination of 10 studies that combined the results of that totaling about 292 patients with chronic kidney disease. The fiber range anywhere from a very low amount up to about 25 grams. And the study on average was about seven weeks, anywhere between four to 12 weeks total. So what did they find? Well, people who consumed the highest amounts of fiber 
had a marked reduction in indoxyl sulfate and p cresyl sulfate. Now, these are the two uremic toxins. They also notice a nice reduction in blood urea nitrogen and uric acid. We're going to talk about that in a second. So how is it that fiber actually reduces the uremic toxins? Well, when you first look at how these toxins are formed, as you consume protein, amino acids like tryptophan or like tyrosine, phenylalanine, these are converted into the precursors for indoxyl sulfate and precresyl sulfate. And then they get conjugated and form the final end product. What dietary fiber does and what makes it so remarkable is that when you look at gut bacteria, they end up using protein as an energy source. When you give them fiber, they switch to using fiber as an energy source. So they use less of those amino acids and in turn, they produce less of those uremic toxins. So essentially what fiber is doing is competing with protein as an energy source. More importantly, fiber helps to produce short-chain fatty acids when it's broken down. So when that happens, those short-chain fatty acids have been shown to help essentially heal your gut barrier. So those intestinal epithelial cells, they actually get stronger and tighter, and therefore there isn't leakage. That reduces how much of those uremic toxins from your gut actually end up in your blood. Then when it comes to things like blood urea nitrogen, the reason you see a reduction in blood urea nitrogen, which when it's really high, people get confused, and that's one of the markers for when patients need dialysis. Well, what happens is dietary fiber will actually cause that colonic bacteria, that bacteria in your gut, to essentially start taking up some of that nitrogen. And then when it takes it up, every time you have a bowel movement, you're getting rid of a lot of that bacteria, so you're excreting it out. And that's how it's able to prevent a lot of that nitrogen from going inside your body. Same thing when you talk about uric acid. So uric acid, as you know, is sort of an end product when it comes to the cycle of purine breakdown. And because fiber ends up being bulky and it's sort of this viscous-like material, it actually interferes with how purines get absorbed inside your gut. So it's preventing that and helping those purines to essentially leave your body. And that's where it ends up being very beneficial. So as you're thinking about it, what's the bottom line? Well, two things. First, even if you have chronic kidney disease, having high fiber diets is very, very helpful. With kidney disease, it can actually lower the amount of uremic toxins that you build up in your body. And if you don't have kidney disease, it's even another great reason to make sure that you're healing your gut, you're making those short chain fatty acids and helping the lining of your gut. And the last thing is, is remember, a plant-focused diet where you push towards eating more whole foods, plant-based diet, is the ideal way to not only help the environment, help animals, but also heal your body and live your best self. Thanks so much for joining us. And as always, I would love to hear your comments below. And please, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe.